And so I guess Elon tried to, you know, correct ship the next day and did this. Elon Musk plans to launch SpaceX Doge first mission paid in Dogecoin. Apparently, he's going to launch a SpaceX mission next year in which you can pay Dogecoin to literally go to the moon, at which point he's also going to throw a, a meme on the moon. He's going to put an actual literal Dogecoin on the moon because this is this is the thing that's happening and this is what the vast amounts of earth's resources should be spent on doing so that's that's good that's 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 normal yeah okay we, we now laugh at the elon we laugh at the elon don't worry everyone i know there's been a lot of questions about uh stereotypes and italian stereotypes and people you know like is it is it right for hassan to play an italian stereotype even though he's turkish uh for hours upon hours on end is it not is it not racist at the end of the day have have italians have italian culture not experienced enough suffrage in their own time i mean at the end of the day the italians were certainly a classification of white people in the u.s who were considered second class citizens and that, that is entirely true that is entirely true so don't worry everybody don't worry i won't be making fun of italians all right we're going to be making fun of elon musk's accent this this is accents within accents you know, I don't pay the taxes. That that's me. That's me making fun of Italian Elon Musk's shitty Italian uh, accent. All right, there's there's layers to this. It's it's, it's very it's very uh, nuanced. The, this this degree of of, of shtick we're working. But yes, yeah, so Elon did the funnies, right? Elon went on the SNL, and uh, it was it was cringe. It was it was it was super cringe. I am Italian, and I will feel offended. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to say it. I'm sorry to say it. But I'm not. I'm not, I'm not directly, I'm not directly parodying Italians here. I mean, you weren't ever saying anything when I was doing my British accents, all of them, all, all my British accents, there was, there was no, there was no outcry. There was nothing, nothing here. No one's saying Britain for the British. W where's all the British pride? UK pride? No, no, there was none of that. I, I didn't see a peep out of any of you, you monstrous hypocrites. What's going on? Are these are these not the last ones? The last like all the old colonies? Whether, whether it happens to be people who were Spanish, like hey, my family is from Catalonia. I I know what it is to be of the old colonial blood. All right, I have I have a little bit. I I have both the blood of colonizers and the colonized flowing through my veins. Both both indigenous and Spanish. There you go. How's that for how's that for a dichotomy? How's how's that for some some strange shit going down? Hey. What what a world! So I'm a, I'm a do the bad accent. Uh, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, perhaps we'll start uh, we'll start with some of these sketches. Let's see what all the hype's about. And I know this is difficult. But were you present at the time of your brother's murder? I was. <laughs> and how exactly was he uh, killed? Sorry. Killed. <laughs> we had a friendly race. Where, where, like, uh, it's like old sitcom style jokes where, like, if there wasn't a laugh track, you wouldn't know that was a joke. Like, what, what is the joke? Like, was that in the script? I have to wonder. Did, did they put that in the script? Was it like, I, I killed, and so, like, shitty Italian accent, dot, 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 uh, applause, laughter and applause. Like, is, is there, is there, a, like, I've been on the set of SNL, by the way. They weren't filming live, but I've walked onto the set. It's, it's, it's really small, by the way. The, the actual area where the audience sits, like, I sat on those chairs. It's teeny. It's a teeny little set. But I, I have to wonder, are, we're, are, is that on cue? It's like, because I, I wouldn't naturally know to laugh. I would actually be sitting there in the audience as everyone's bursting out laughing and, and do the thing. Like, what the fuck is wrong? What is going on? We had a friendly race with a go kart. Then if someone had thought of a banana peel out of Mario, his car is being out. He wiped out all over the pavement. I hear a noise, I like. <laughs> and I know. This is fucking basically uh, the nostalgia critic, like levels of, of comedy. Like it's it's just like it's funny because it's like the thing outside of the place in which the thing is normally in. So so it's funny because we we took Mario, but but we put Mario in a courtroom. And then Halo walks in. Master Chief will be there too. Yeah, com comedy gold. You get it, right? My brother was a date. <laughs> and is the person who threw the banana peel present in the courtroom at this moment? He, yeah, he's. <laughs> All right, let 
the record show that the witness has indicated Wario, the evil Mar- I want Nintendo to dim cut this. Oh, oh, suddenly everyone here believes in copyright law. Oh, oh, what's happening? What's, what's going on? What's going on, Lefty? Suddenly it's like, fuck. Yeah, I hope they take them down. Yeah, this is, this is well within the bounds of fair use. I know, I know in my heart of hearts, this is, this is, it, like, this is an incredible example of fair use in practice. And fair use should exist, because if it doesn't, we've lost satire and parody. The ability for us to do that and to not have to pay the copyright holders is, is necessary for a functioning society. In my heart of hearts, I know this, but at the same time, fuck. Objection! I'm sorry, the other Mario. The prosecution rests, Your Honor. He <laughs> what was that sentence? <laughs> oh, stop! Oh, I have food. Don't worry. This is why they pay me the big bucks. Would the defense like to call its first witness? Uh, we would, Your Honor. The defense calls. Wario. I was joking. I know, obviously. No, but I just, I, hey, you weren't alone. I saw the internet over the weekend. I was, I was on the Twitter when Dave wasn't the one tweeting. And I remember looking through a lot of the tweets and I was like, God damn, so many people are making that joke. I, I saw like 20 prominent leftist accounts being like, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Nintendo will uh, dimka for people who do like modded Smash characters, but uh, won't dimka for this. And then I was just like, okay, all right. We saw the, we saw the joke, but this, just so everyone knows, this is, this is like, the very definition of fair use. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Why are you all laughing? This, it's what referential, it's, it's funny because he's walking funny like the game character does and then the mute is that it? Is reference? <laughs> like. <clears throat> Wario, is it true, as many have put forward today, that you are evil? No, I am not the evil. I just uh, misunderstood. And some of the anti-Italian hatred in the Scott room is uh, disgusting. Objection. His accent is really bringing it on himself. Sustained. Watch it. Isn't, isn't Wario not Italian? Like, canonically? I, I gotta look that up. I don't want to get this wrong. I thought he was like Russian or something. Wario uh, is a fictional character in Nintendo's Mario series, designed as the arch rival to Mario. He first appeared in 1992's Game Boy Super Mario Land 2, the Six Golden Coins. Fucking badass game, by the way. If y'all haven't played Six Golden Coins, such a classic. I played through this game so many times. I like, I know all the secrets. As the main antagonist and final boss, his name is a portmanteau of Mario's name and the Japanese word Wairu, meaning bad. Oh, how's that pronounced? Haitian Creole. Fuck yeah. Baruri. Waduri? Waduri? Oh man, that's so different than what I assumed. Waduri. 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 He bears a slight resemblance to Spike. Wario did not debut until 1992. The first named appearance of the character occurred in Super Mario Land 2. He was designed by uh, Hiroshi Kiyotake. Uh, Wario's design arose from Super Mario Land's design team, making the game based around someone else's character. The creation of Wario allowed them to create their own symbolize their situation. Nintendo originally considered making him a German character before he developed into an Italian like Mario. Oh, okay. So he was originally considered to be German, but then he became Italian. All right. Okay. So this is not... Not completely, not completely anti-canonical. You know, funny you should mention his accent. Your Honor, I'd like to submit as evidence Wario's Super Mario Wiki fan page, and this is all real. People are so mean, not online. <laughs> First, the section entitled Personality, and see if this doesn't sound defamatory to my client's character. <clears throat> Wario is generally lazy, ruthless, and greedy. He is foul and smelly as he eats a lot of garlic, his favorite food. Wow, <laughs> racist much? Objection, he's eating garlic right now. <laughs> Let's just keep reading, shall we? Here's a section titled Friends. Wario has almost never been seen with friends. The only person who hangs out with him is Waluigi, the evil Luigi. And I don't appreciate that description. <laughs> I'm Waluigi. It's like a weird Luigi, not an evil Luigi. I'm not wrong. Objection. How is it? Again, like, you're just saying things out loud. It's like reference. 
it's funny because of reference. Then sometimes you see him up flashing like he was invincible. That's when he was on cocaine. Objection! Overruled! This is fun. <laughs> and was there any- Okay, I, I, can't, I can't. I know I'm supposed to watch through the whole thing for the whole, the funnies, but it's it's, it's just too much. Here's the other one, and like, if, as if that wasn't bad enough, by the way. If, okay, well first, let's let's explain a thing. Let's get Elon back on the screen here. If, if y'all didn't know, so here's how this went. Cryptocurrency, Dogecoin, the one that was supposed to go to the moon over the weekend, as soon as SNL starts, it starts to peak at the very start of it and hits about 73 cents. So that's just like at the very first five minutes. And then immediately, boom, like just plummets by like 20% uh, in its value. I, I think almost entirely because a handful of very large holders, because the whole thing is ultimately dictated by uh, the very wealthy, like anything else in a Ponzi scheme. But the very wealthy holders of the uh, the Doge were just like, oh yeah, sell, boom, just made like a cool 500 milli. And then I'll wait till it plummets back down because I have the power to do this whenever I want. And then when it plummets back down because everyone else is going to freak out and pull out, then I'll, I'll buy it again. And I'll keep doing that. And every time I do that, I make more and more infinite, infinite wealth you know could be that i like to believe in my little tinfoil hat moment of the internet that it was because this was so cringe this was so cringe this was so because it's it's based on a meme all right because it's, it's meme based and elon musk was meme daddy he was the doge father so to speak because he was so cringe everyone saw how horrible and cringe he was and all of their like my god father how could you have forsaken me? Happened, and, and that resulted in some sales. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be my little tinfoil side of the internet. All right, you know, I think he memed it. He memed it into the sun. All right, all right. I'll oh god, no more. All right, let's watch the even more cringe. If you think if you think that was cringe, this was so bad. In conclusion of Gen Z Hospital. Bro, nobody's telling us anything. Is Bestie gonna be okay? Nurse, we demand to know how our bestie is doing. I'm sorry, bro. I told you I don't have that information yet. <laughs> Bruh, seriously? I'm so pressed right now, bro. Don't be pressed. The doctor will be in shortly, bro. Dead ass. <laughs> Yo, if this doctor keeps leaving us on... Now, you may have heard... You may have heard some people explain why this is really, really messed up for a handful of reasons. One of the big reasons being, of course, that, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not, I'm not a Z, I'm not a Zoomer, all right? I'm, I'm quite old. I'm, I'm a millennial. I'm one of the, the last remaining millennials, okay, before they, they became boomers. But yes, I guess by definition, you're a Zoomer or you're a boomer. And I don't speak Zoomer, all right? So I don't, I don't quite know how the kids sound nowadays. But what this really, really turned out to be emulating was a variation on abonics, which is also another way of explaining black Americans' use and vernacular uh, and, and language that had been evolved since the time of slavery uh, into the modern era. And that's why this got real messed up. This that, That's why, as this went on, you know, also known as AAVE, yes, that, that's why this this was like, oh, shit. So this is less the way Zoomers talk, less, less Zoomer language, and more you, once again, really appropriating black culture for the lulls, which is, again, also weird. You know, strange, strange on a lot of levels. No, 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 it's gonna be okay. Bestie cannot die like this. Big facts. She's gonna make it, bro. There's the doctor now. Is this Morgan Squad? Gang, gang. Doctor, please tell us what's up with our bestie. Yo, I might wanna sit down. What I have to say right now? Okay, let me explain it to you, just for two seconds. Peace, and welcome to The Breakdown. I'm your host, Claire. Now, whether we call it African-American vernacular English, Black English, phonics, or just the way Black folks talk, the cadences, phrases, and expressions birthed within African-American culture demonstrate a unique approach to the English language with a special history few have studied. Today, we're gonna take a look, a deeper look at the African influence on this English language and the origins of the unique ability African-Americans have to turn a phrase, express a sentiment, and merge an African sense of grammar and vocabulary with the English language. We gonna get into all of that and more right now on The Breakdown. The Breakdown. Language is the primary means human beings use to share ideas with one another. And if you were to ask the average scholar, they might describe the origins of the English language as mostly German, with major influence from the various Latin languages. 
What do we would it make sense that you have a, if you have a segregated country, different languages evolve? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, not. We use English words rooted in German, French, or Spanish all the time. Hamburger, bouquet, taco. But what about the commonly used English words that came from Africa? The African influence on the English language is a topic often ignored in academic circles. There are quite a few words that are African in origin that are now commonly accepted English words. In Senegalese languages, wow, or, or something very similar to that is wow. the word yes. Um, and we say wow, of course, all the time as a word of affirmation now. Also words like yam, gumbo, okra, words like that, oftentimes uh, we've been able to associate those back to African roots. The black folk who learn to speak English learn to speak it from English people who were ignorant themselves. And so the ahs and the dims and the doze was how uh, the British people from, from the British Isles, from Ireland, from Scotland spoke when they came to America. It was the poor folk who were the overseers on the concentration camps that they called plantations. It wasn't the highly educated, but even within us adapting this foreign language, this oppressive language, there were methods of speaking and communicating that were part of the African culture that we used to dress up this language. Right? to give feeling and soul to this language. It is because of the energy that emanates from the body that gives life to the words that transforms the consciousness of the people hearing those words. That's soul communication, brothers and sisters. That's what we have, and we have it better than anybody else. In the 17th century, when masses of Africans were brought to the Americas on slave ships, they were forbidden from doing anything that might be considered a threat to European control. It was a long list that included anything from wearing African clothes to playing African drums to practicing African religion. And one of the most crippling restrictions was forbidding enslaved Africans to speak their own languages, which hindered their ability to conspire for escape or counterattack. As a result, out of necessity and ingenuity... That, by black the way, is a really important part. And when you hear the development of all these different languages, that's, that's an element that's not normally explained, but one that cannot be overlooked, to be totally honest, because that is really important. I mean, that is George Orwin, 1989, all right? Like, no question. Like, uh, that shit is going down. If you prevent people from having their own distinct language, because that way it's going to be able to prevent them from doing any kind of uprising, you, in effect, are actually trying to program them from, like, the cultural level, from the level of language. Like, that is fucked up. People in North America developed their own style of speaking, a seamless blend of English and African languages, and often wrapped in code. Wait in the water, wait in the water, children, wait in the water. Germans isn't that a poem too, yeah. The water. Coded language, that is language that the enslaved would use to communicate with each other so that their masters, uh, the white community, their mistresses, the overseers would not be able to readily tell what they were saying or um, the messages that they were giving to one another. Oftentimes, there would be ways that they may want to communicate uh, just to have some privacy because so much of their lives as enslaved people was dictated to them. And to be able to have some agency and some control uh, over their communication that was something that they were very ingenious about. And so some examples that we have would be the Negro spirituals. God's trouble the water. Every time he be going to the store, he be getting the same thing. The indefinite, continual, or occasional tense is an African grammar device that is often applied to English. It is a tense that does not exist within traditional English grammar rules. Where is it? But it does exist within the grammar rules of certain African languages and its usage in English is practiced almost exclusively by descendants of enslaved Africans throughout the diaspora. Nowadays, we hear quite a few people, they'll use the expressions, he be going to the store all the time. The, you have the subject with the verb to be. They oftentimes would incorporate those vocabulary words into their existing grammar structures. Shalande be tripping. And you speak this language and you were listening to me, you understand that I- What's so wild though uh, is, you know, being someone who's not black, how much this is just like, adopted uh, and reappropriated, especially by other cultures, you know, like even, even multi-racial Canadians are, are, are like, we'll, we'll speak like that sometimes without any idea as to where the origins of that came from. Like no idea about the historical connotations of that. Not even thinking about that, you know, I, not thinking about how this could have been like an ingenious coded language to be able to uh, hide things from, you know, slave masters and stuff like that. So why are they tripping right now? He was tripping the last time I saw him. Shit, Hanks. <laughs> yeah, no shit. That's three different times, 
senses. <laughs> Every time he be going to the store, he be forgetting what I asked him for. So then he be calling me, asking me what I be wanting. Another way African thinking is often applied to the English language is in the usage of opposites as emphasis. Yo, you heard that new verse? I push a T? Crazy. Stupid. Yo, LeBron's skills are dumb. Like, everyone does this now. Everyone. You know, I think I've done this like 10 times during the course of the stream already. Like, th this is so adopted in everyday mainstream culture. Don't even think about that, though, you know? Dumb. Foolish. We'll say, you know, that's a bad coach or you're a bad brother. And we don't mean that in the negative. That's we sick, bro. That's sick. That's fucking ill. Fuck. Sick. Ill. That sounds like skater talk, doesn't it? it but <laughs> uh, Once again, reappropriated. I mean that very positively. And so we have taken that colorful use of language and we're still coding our language. But now it is not because we are shielding from an oppressor. It is because we have reappropriated a tactic, a strategy that was used 400 years ago. Yo, she bad. Bad. What's so bad about that? Not bad meaning bad. Bad meaning good. Oh. So bad mean good. Are oh, you stupid, man? I'm stupid. Oh, that's a good thing, right? Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good. That's oh, bad. now you think? No, not stupid, good. <laughs> stupid, bad. Bad, stupid. Wait, you, this stupid equals bad. <laughs> this isn't even like a great skit, and this is already funnier than everything that was in the SNL one. Like everything. <laughs> it's the language of the barbershop, the beauty shop. It's the language of that you sing your praises to God in. Right? And I don't know, you know, no black person who won't know what I'm saying if I say, don't nobody don't know Jesus can't tell me nothing about him. They know what I've said. <laughs> Man, that's, yeah, I never thought about anyone. Not, no, sorry, never thought about any of this. And that is a bunch of double negatives in there, which is a hallmark. But, like, that's, it's wild how that's so woven into, like, you know, just, like, the fabric of our current speech. Like, I don't even think about this shit. And again, multiracial Canadian, uh, far, far away from any of this. The language. <laughs> Today, more African Americans are coming to understand these grammar rules differently than they did in the past. Rather than avoiding Black English for fear of appearing uneducated or denouncing it as ignorant, many now see it as an important link to the African American ancestors. Yep. So, by the way, AAVE, uh, African American Vernacular uh, English. That's that's what became really controversial about this fucking absolute train wreck of a sketch. That might be a little cringe. Just give us the tea. Okay. Well. As you may have seen on her live, your bestie took a major L while driving her Hellcat. Yeah, we saw. We tried everything we could in surgery, and it was sus for a while. But we have your bestie on a machine, and we're doing everything we can. So, bestie's gonna be okay, right? I'm sorry, but uh, at this particular time, that's looking like Cap. Bro! Among us. Bro, can we see her? Unfortunately, not right now, bro. You know the vibes. But I promise, if anything changes, I'll pull up. <laughs> Say less, bro. And thank you, Doctor. You're a real one. We stand you. And I stand you. So it was a disaster, both from a comedy standpoint and a financial standpoint. If you were a big holder of uh, of the Doge, and so I guess Elon tried to, you know, correct ship the next day and did this. Elon Musk plans to launch SpaceX Doge first mission paid in Dogecoin. Apparently, he's going to launch a SpaceX mission next year in which you can pay Dogecoin to literally go to the moon. At which point, he's also going to throw a, a meme on the moon. He's going to put an actual literal Dogecoin. On the moon, because this is this is the thing that's happening, and this is what vast amounts of Earth's resources should be spent on doing. So that's that's good. That's 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 normal. When people talk about um, the desire to go into space, like I I'm with you. I, I like I, I'm like I love I, I like I grew up with that shit. You know, I, I'm like anyone else. I want to go to the stars. I, I want us to be in space. I just don't want us to colonize space. Like I think our only ability to reach the point where we would have the technology sufficient to be able to accomplish things like inter interstellar travel, stuff like that, in, in the vast, vast openness of space. You have to imagine these points in time are so incredibly far that we can't even comprehend in our own minds what it means to go light years, to travel light years between galaxies and stuff like that. So Sounds amazing though. Obviously, I'm on board, but it cannot be from a colonizer perspective because if that is still how humanity is acting, we will never get to that point. We will be dead so far before then. So far. Like, one of the great things about all the horrors, or sorry, one of the only good things about the horrors of this pandemic has this really kind of shaken humanity. It made us realize for the first time, like, this is an all or nothing game. This is like us, we are 
humans. We are a species. We have to do this together. We cannot do this little, like, you know, tribal, territorial, my country better than your country. Your country poor, my country rich. Uh, you you mine me diamonds so I get better cell phone and, and poggy PS5s and stuff like that. That can't be the way the world gets, like, into the future because it's just, it's not sustainable. We we will die. We will die doing that. So we can either work together as, as humanity. We can band together and uh, overcome everything that ails us. We have the opportunity to do that we have the means to do that you name it starvation global warming whatever problems we have we technically technically can solve we just have to do it together and that includes this virus so that, that includes this whole like well we have a pandemic right now we need everyone to get vaccinated even very poor countries what are we going to do are we going to continue to just obey the profit motive go down this road or are we going to do this because there's no there's no space colonization human future there's, there's only one thing like we all know what it is right this is this is the only way forward. This is this is the thing we have to do, especially especially this part, the the gay part. But everything else is important as well. We have to do we have to do all these things. All right. This is this is this is important. And don't get me wrong. I I love I love the the Doge meme. Okay. I I, I like all, all fun, all, all all good stuff. But you know, the, this is trash. This is this is just complete and utter trash. Yeah. Hey, do you, do, you, do you like movies? Do you, do you like do you like surfs? Do you want do you want do you want movies and surf, surfs watching the movies? So then come over to the new channels. It's the surfs the cinema. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Can you do the thing? You know that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives. Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like just, just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just, it's not a great company. But hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our gods, I'm Raft and Xander Corvus. We shall build golden idols in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, our soft, spongy flesh is yours to command. To our lords, Evan Nudie, Trevor R., Alexander Thaler, Ryan Lubin, bisexual black gamer, Toe Fox, and Jeffrey Lamb, we proudly carry your sigils onto the battlefield. And to our knights of the round table, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, Multimondi, Timothy Hart, Trevor Janis, Lemmy 101, Anthropophagic, Saren 42, Chronic to Hemp Hog, Kelly Kotka, The Great Poudini, Von Janney, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Nkosin, J. Fraser Cartwright, Jimmy Big Nuts, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Political Puppy, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Nicholas Marks, Jopi, Josh Mickelson, Melissa Murphy, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, and Constance Joyce Lacheris. We tip our cap and lift our mug and salute you.